All right. So actually, we are we have this all together uh, twelve days of webinar series, which is all together approximately forty to 50, 45 hours long. And uh, in that particular webinar series, that important topic, we are we have divided that webinar series into different topics. The topic of discussion, which is going to be there for two days, will be vulvo vaginal health. And uh, after that, it will be female sexual health. Then we are going to cover female reproductive health, female menstrual health, menstruation. We'll understand the science behind periods. We'll understand female reproductive health, all the organs, internal genitals, external genitals. We will understand what can goes wrong with the reproductive organs of a female and what uh, problems female can um, go through in her life. And we will we'll try to understand that. And after that, her fertility health is also very, very important. So we will understand the fertility rehabilitation and the role of physiotherapy in fertility. Then we will understand uh, pregnancy uh, trimester wise, and then we have uh, like we'll understand how the how to make a female ready for the childbirth, vaginal birth. What is labor? Uh, what happens during the childbirth? How we as a physical therapist can help a female, and after that postnatal rehabilitation. So this is all the topic of women health. And in this webinar series, we will try to understand our female starting from the puberty all the way up to uh, when she will become a mother and uh, in post-menopausal post, uh, stage. So this series is approximately 40 to 45 um, hours long and approximately 12 to 15 days long, which we have divided between different segments, different topics. So to understand a female body, very, very important that we understand the pelvic region. Uh, if, you, if you compare a female body with a male body, so we have male uh, pubic symphysis pelvic region and we have a female pelvic region also. Into male pelvic region, there is all, all together two organs are lying actually and in a female body there are three organs lying respectively starting from anterior to posterior so this is a beautiful image beautiful slide in front of us where we can appreciate that a female is having a pubic symphysis so you can see my cursor is going on so this is my cursor cursor so we have this pubic symphysis we all can palpate our pubic symphysis right now and uh, this is male pubic symphysis, okay? So we both have male and uh, like female and male, we both have pubic symphysis. We have a sacrum at the back. So anteriorly pubic symphysis and posteriorly we have a sacrum. Same way in a female body, anteriorly uh, pubic symphysis, posteriorly we are having a sacrum. This is a tailbone, which is the last part. And this is again a tailbone in a male, which is the last part. Then you can see uh, this is all big pelvic floor, the red color of muscle, which is present, which is spanned across. So this is a pelvic floor muscle. And uh, just behind all of you, if you just palpate your pubic symphysis, just behind the pubic symphysis, we have our first organ lying that is bladder. So when we are talking about uh, women health physiotherapy or when we're talking about uh, helping a female in her life, so we always be ready. We should be able to understand that any complication which happens with the bladder, where the role of physiotherapy can be there, we should be able to understand and ready to help them. So urinary health or bladder health is a very, very important component of male and female um, health, actually, men's and women's health. So a bladder is important and bladder is having a important passage. So this is a urethra, urethra in a female body. So bladder and urethra is present behind the pubic symphysis. Same way in male, you can also appreciate bladder is present just behind the pubic symphysis. And they also have a urethra, which is a long urethra altogether approximately 17 to 18 centimeter long and the female urethra is approximately four centimeter long so which is shorter and straight urethra actually we don't have that much of curve and uh, their urethra is uh, pierced by very one small gland and this is their prostrate gland 
So you get thrice crossing or the pierced by. So this, uh, this is prostate gland is grabbing the urethra of a male. And uh, you can also appreciate that size of the bladder in male and female body. So size of the bladder is a bit smaller as compared to male bladder. So uh, that's why the female can accommodate approximately 350 to 450 ml of uh, urine and male can uh, accommodate approximately 600 ml of urine. So which makes a female to go for urination uh, approximately six to eight times in a day and make male can go four to six times in a day because they have a larger capacity to store urine and we have a smaller capacity. Our bladder is, as a female, our bladder is lying in two pelvic cavity, mostly actually, when it is empty. And during the filling phase, it goes to the abdominal cavity also. But in male, bladder is, as per the bigger size, that lies halfway into the half into the pelvis cavity and half into the abdominal cavity. And during the filling, it will be more towards the abdominal cavity. So you can appreciate the size. And uh, then just behind that uh, bladder, we have very, very important component of a female body that is the cervix. So this is the cervix which is present at posterior uh, at just approximately by touching the posterior wall of the bladder and the upper part of the vagina is also approximately at the same location where the posterior wall of the bladder is. So in this image, if I'll take a different color of pan, so this is a posterior wall of the bladder and you can appreciate that posterior wall of the bladder is going to come in relation with these two things. So this is the upper part of vagina and this is the, low, this is the cervix actually, lower part of the cervix or neck of the uterus. So we have this uterus, which is our special organ, unique organ. And uh, this is the lower part of this uterus, which we are calling it as a cervix. So cervix and upper part of vagina is present behind the bladder. So you can appreciate here. And then we have a urethra and uh, behind the urethra, the lower part of the vagina is present. And then urethra and vagina they both are piercing through the pelvic floor muscles so you can also appreciate these are the right pelvic floor muscle coming from one side and then they will be left pelvic floor muscles will be coming from the other side so these pelvic floor muscles are going to create a encircling around the canals so it is very very uh, visible into this on the top of the bladder, so this is a superior surface of the bladder. So on the superior surf surface of the bladder, the uterus is going to come into contact. So uterus is present on top of the bladder. So you can also appreciate this. So that's why we uh, always, the uterus is anti-flexion and anti -verted. Uh, This is what the axis of the uterus and the position of the uterus in a female body. Same way, if you will see the last organ which is present behind the uterus and behind the vagina, you can appreciate all together 10 to 12 centimeter long. Uh, this is our rectum. And rectum is also having, a, rectum is a part which is collecting the stool. And the rectum is also having a one small canal because through the canals we are going to pass, we are going to void. So this is the anal canal. And out of these three canals, one, two, and three, you can appreciate the largest canal is vagina and the smallest canal is anal canal. Approximately six centimeter long vagina is six inches i'm sorry six inches long vagina is there uh, like four to six inch and uh, depending upon the state which state of the female she is if during the sexual stage and whenever we are inserting something and whenever baby is coming outside so it can be always it can always achieve a bigger bigger length so vagina is very very flexible it has a high degree of elasticity it is like a rubber band it's like a condom i can say which can take a shape of whatever organ is passing through the particular canal. So uh, I'm re I'm just let me just erase everything and make again clear for all of you. So in this image, you can again appreciate three organs: bladder, 
with urethra, uterus, middle part, middle organ with cervix and vaginal canal and large posterior part, rectum, rectum organ and there's a last part of the colon and that is having an anal canal. So these three canals and out of these, vagina is the longest canal in a female body and uh, four to six centimeter long. Same way, this so four to six inches long actually. And uh, same way, urethra is also there, which is approximately four centimeter long in a female body. And then anal canal, which is approximately 3.5 centimeter long. So you can appreciate anal canal is the smallest canal. And another important aspect is that stool is the one hard and solid particle which has a weight that is going to collect into the rectum. So this canal is, either, it, it might be the shorter, the sh uh, shortest out of these three, but it has very, very high uh, strength or too much of uh, rectal pressure, anal pressure is there, which will not let the stool go outside. And uh, anal pressure, because of the help of the anal pressure and because of the help of pelvic or internal sphincter and as well as internal sphincters, we are able to hold the stool inside. So this is our important organs which is present. Just behind the rectum, you can appreciate the sacrum is going. And uh, sacrum, we all understand that S1 to S4 part. And at the last, we have a coccyx. Uh, these are the structures which is present in a female body. And you can, we can't uh, forget to mention about the pelvic floor muscle because uh, pelvic floor muscle and we are the people who work with the muscle. So this is very, very important muscle which maintain the continence and which helps in many things. So it is, you can understand the organs are uh, supported by this muscle organ is uh, the canals are passing through these muscles and muscle has a circulatory effect so muscle has a lot of function circulatory function uh, muscle is having a supportive function muscle is having a centric function and uh, muscle is having even a sexual function so uh, and and uh, we can't even uh, forget about the stability it also maintains the stability from anterior to posterior so these are five s we should never forget about the pelvic floor muscle uh, we will try to understand that also in our women health uh, sessions uh, but you can appreciate in this image beautiful image which is very very clear to understand and uh, after that outside here if i'll just create one outside here uh, on the pubic on the bay on the top of the pubic swim uh, we know that we have a like um, this mons pubis area and we have a vulva and we have a vestibule then we have a perineal body there and then we have an enococcal body there. So all these structures are also present. And we will understand we called all of them as the external genitals. So these are the external genitals. In today's part, we will understand that that's a part of vulvo-vaginal health. We will try to understand the vulva of a female. So we'll go from external to internal one by one, step by step and try to understand a female body and the conditions when she's going through and the changes according to the age that is also very important so this is our first topic which is going to last for today and tomorrow and then we have a third topic sexual health second topic sexual health now this is a female body and you can appreciate you can compare that with the male body we don't have uterus so if we don't have a uterus so we have more space in the pelvic cavity in a male okay so uh, that's why their organs are more bigger uh, as compared to females bigger into size and they can accumulate a lot of uh, more things as compared to females and so we have, they have a bladder and just behind the bladder they have a rectum so behind the bladder uterus and canna, uh, vagina goes there in the female body and then rectum but in female in male we have bladder and then we are having the rectum with the anal canal and they have one sexual organ that is a prostrate uh, which is just present beneath the bladder so these are the organs and posteriorly again we have a sec they have the sacrum and the coccyx this is a scrotum of a male and this is the penile structure of a male which is present externally 
So whenever in future we will plan some male uh, re male pelvic rehab or male sessions, you can definitely join me into that to understand. So in today's session, we are covering this one. I hope you all are clear so far. Okay, so whenever we are understanding about these organs, let's not go directly inside. Let's understand our important part because we are musculoskeletal people. So let's understand the skeleton first. So this is our pubic, uh, this is our uh, pelvic bone. And uh, into this pelvic bone. Okay, you need, you want me to, am I audible, everyone? Yes, you are. Yes, we can hear you. All right, okay. Uh, let me know if it is going very fast, okay? Uh, it was just an introduction, but uh, one by one, we are going to take it. Okay, so I know that you all are uh, expert of the body. We all are expert of the body, but still, if you are starting it, uh, let's understand, let's revise again about the pelvic bone. So this is our pelvic bone. This is our pubic symphysis. I want all of you to please palpate your pubic symphysis. Into pubic symphysis, we have uh, like we have a one like right and left bone actually pelvic bone. So this is our right and this is our left bone, and they both are coming into the center with a uh, this one this connective tissue. This is present here anteriorly, and posteriorly we are having this. Um, another connection that is a SI joint. So we all we all can appreciate this is the sacrum posteriorly and this is ilium with ilium we have this iliac crust this is iliac fossa and uh, now you can see that we have all this pubic rami this is pubic rami and this is a pubic bone of right side and this is all pubic rami and ischium rami going on. This is ischial tuberosity down there. And uh, this is ischial ramus. This is one uh, operator for foramen. We all understand about this. This is ASIS. Uh, sorry, this is ASIS anteriorly. And this one, not this one, sorry. This one is ASIS. So we can palpate your ASIS also on right and left. And posteriorly, this iliac bone is gonna join with the sacrum and that is forming SI joint, sacroiliac joint. So we know that right and left sacroiliac joint. And uh, anteriorly, we have both bones are connected with pubic sympha, this uh, connective tissue. And we are, therefore, we are, we are uh, calling it as a pubic symphysis. All right, so we have this connective tissue pubic symphysis, which is connecting the both. So yes, we call it as a, they are forming pelvic girdle and pelvic girdle is like a basin. It's like a bowl, that kind of uh, shape they are creating. That consists of four bones to innovate bone and uh, right and left hip bone, ilium, ischium, pubis, one sacrum and coccyx. We can also divide them as pelvic girdle or pelvic spine. Pelvic girdle means hip bones, which is fusion of three bones and pelvic spine means sacrum and coccyx. And these bones can join with the help of uh, four pubic joint, four joints actually. Anteriorly, we have, uh, not four, three. Uh, anteriorly, we are having uh, one pubic symphysis and posteriorly, we are having two sacroiliac joints, left and right. As per anatomical position of the pelvis, the anterior superior iliac spine and pubic symphysis should fall on the same plane. Okay, so this is uh, very, very important. So whenever we are palpating our ASIS, so pubic, if you palpate your pubic symphysis also, so the level of both are the same. The range of movement at the sacroiliac joint and the symphysis pubis is very minimum. It is like we don't have that much of mobility there, but movement is present. We can feel this movement during uh, pregnancy actually when the whole bone will go for a lot of um, like you know, laxity because of a lot of, lot of increased into that uh, uh, space, into that area. So because of the relaxing hormone, there will be more mobile mobility into the SI joint and uh, pubic symphysis. It and that can be continued after postnatal also. 
and uh, in healing phase the as uh, this uh, connective tissues are going to heal up and that stability going to maintain afterwards so it provides the protective wall like framework to all our important pelvic content pelvic organs which is present there the wall is very very important wall and this wall is creating a support uh, they are going to stabilize the whole area and whole pelvic organs inside and they are also going to help us in supporting uh, you know stabilizing the trunk and helps the carrying the whole body of upper body weight to transferring towards the lower body whenever we are sitting standing walking so weight is transferred through this particular pelvic bone so very very important and we already understood that into this pelvic cavity we have organs lying safely in positions so it is helping in maintaining the position of the organ when we are talking about the pelvic structure male and female pelvic structure so we can uh there's a difference between both the male pelvic cavity and a female cavity, pelvic cavity. I, I, can un, I can hope that you all already understood, but let me revise that. Uh, there are two pictures in front of us in this slide, female pelvis and a male pelvis. And if you compare both, so uh, the first thing which we can see here, which is very, very visible, is the sacrum. So this is a very long and narrow sacrum the width of the sacrum is narrow and there's a long kind of long sacrum is present and if you compare their sacrum with our sacrum you can understand our sacrum is wider so we have a base of the sacrum is wide and we have not a longer one we have a shorter one sacrum okay so we have the length of the sacrum is short and they have elongated and uh, long, elongated, okay, and narrow, and we are having a broad and short sacrum. Now you come back, come to the second part. This is pubic symphysis. So male pubic symphysis is again long pubic symphysis. The pubic bone is also long anteriorly. All this pubic rami, ischium rami, they are also longer. So this is the whole structure. And uh, the female body, you can appreciate, we have a shorter pubic rami. And uh, that's how their pubic symphysis is also strong. The connective tissue which is present there, it is very, very tight. And they, they, they don't release relaxing hormones. So they don't have, they don't have to go through pregnancy. So there's no effect of relaxing coming in their uh, bones. So they will be always having a hard uh, kind of uh, this connected uh, this uh, connective tissue will be very very thick in uh, male as compared to female because whenever we get pregnant whenever we be under the fact of relaxing in our life even during the ovulation time period also so whenever those hormones are coming they create some softening of this connective tissue specifically during the pregnancy and when the baby is coming out during labor time period we all understand that so our connective tissue is soft as compared to male and they have a thick connective tissue it makes our pubic symphysis more mobile and they have less mobility into the pubic symphysis so i hope you understood that you can also appreciate here some uh, angles so in this one this is the pubic symphysis coming right and left and if you follow this pubic rami downwards and one right pubic rami and the left pubic rami. If you just uh, create an angle, you try to understand the angle between them. So the angle is a very narrow angle in male. It is a, a approximately 60 to 70 centimeter, 70 degree angle actually. So, um, but in female, if you see, because we have a shorter pubic symphysis and our pubic Ischial tuberosities, so their ischial tuberosities are very closer to each other. Their sits bone, very palpable and uh, longer as well as uh, very close. They Because of this long pubic symphysis, they are closer to each other. So we can appreciate that. And because of that, the pubic arch is also 60 to 70 degrees. And, but our pubic symphysis might kind of bit bit wider. They are away from each other. And because we have this 
big hip area also because of the puberty changes our pelvic bone is going to shift change into size and shapes so we can see the widening of the hip during that particular time during puberty time when our body is changing and this widening and change into pubic bone can be uh, noticed during different stages of a female life so whenever we starting our sexual activities whenever we are starting pregnancy in post time period so we can see the different changes into the female pelvis and that different change we can always assess by assessing the pubic uh, arch the angle of the pubic arch so angle of pubic arch should be in a female body approximately 90. 80 to 90 is a right angle, which, which is good angle actually. But that angle can always change. So all of you right now in front of me can check your pubic angle. You want to do this exercise, girls? 